Bradford, 60 miles north of London and sitting right between the M1 and A1. A town of history, diversity and some jolly good coffee shops. With its picturesque river, the town has been central to many historic figures. John Bunyan, Morning. John Howard, Hello. Glenn Miller, Hi there. and Charles Wells. Cheers. But I ask you, people of Bedford, where are the women connected with this great town? Women of Bedford. Women of Bedford. Hmm? Women of Bedford. No. 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 Sorry. Mm -mm. No. Anyway, back to the film, and we'll tell you. Our story starts in a secondary school in the leafy suburbs of Bedford. Cue aerial shot. Oh, that's lovely. Good afternoon, ladies. Afternoon, afternoon Miss. So, risk takers and history makers, how's the research going? Um, well, you know, um, um, the deadline is tomorrow. No excuses. I think you'd better spend the rest of your day at the library. Oh, now, girls, this is not a punishment. Think of it as an opportunity to learn about four amazing women who are connected to your hometown. Hmm? Don't think of it as history. I mean, that's old news. This is her story. <laughs> well, just do your best. Hmm? Come on, guys, it's this way. I didn't even know we had a library. Me neither. This is so last century. Seriously, guys? Come on, I know a good spot. I can't find anything about Ellen Oliver on here. Have you got anything, Jess? I can't even get a signal. That's what I mean, I can't even get a connection. Well, there's nothing on Dorothy Osborne in here. Exactly. These women are not famous because they didn't do anything. They must have done something, otherwise Miss wouldn't have set the task. Well, what have you found out, Katie? Nothing so far. There must be something. Well, if the internet doesn't know who these women are, then who are they? Nobody. Exactly. What is she doing? Katie, what are you looking at? A book. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's covered in dust. It hasn't been used in ages. It's exactly what Miss said. A story that's never been heard before. Her story. Never say that again. <sighs> Elizabeth Bunyan. I am Elizabeth Bunyan, activist and mother. When I was 18 years old, I became the second wife of John Bunyan and a mother to his four children. When John was arrested, I refused to stay quiet and do nothing. Despite having little money or support, I challenged the male-dominated in 17th century establishment to get my husband released. I fought the law, but the law won. On tonight's show of Who Do You Think You Are, we find ourselves at the Swan Hotel, Bedford where Elizabeth Bunyan faces three judges in her quest to challenge the establishment and get her husband released. He's dusty. He's rusty. And we're your favourite game show hosts. <laughs> yes, folks, it's time for another episode of Judge, Who Do You Think You Are? Who Do You Think You Are? This week, our featured judges are... He looks suspicious and acts officious. It's Judge Henry Chester. He likes his coffee milky and likes to find you guilty. It's Judge Thomas Twiston. And finally, he's fair, he's square. 
He's the only good one there. It's Judge Matthew Hale. Round one. What did your husband do? Nothing that was wrong. And yet our records say he's guilty. But he never entered a plea. And yet our records say he's guilty. But he never even had a trial. And yet our records say he's guilty. <laughs> Round one to the judges. Round two. Round two, Judge Hale. Was your husband a violent man? No, not at all. A little Bible bashing maybe, but that's all. What was his lawful trade? A tinker, sir. And have you any income while he's been in jail? None. I walked for four days to London with this petition and four days back to Bedford, and all I want is my husband returned to our home. If he had the money, he would not be treated so. Can the poor not have justice like the rich do? <gasps> Round two to Elizabeth Bunyan. Round three. And now for the decider, Judge Twiston. Yay! Shall we reverse the law because you have no money in your purse, madam? I say your husband preaches not the word of God, but the doctrine of the devil. And he sends you, a devil woman, to tempt us from the truth. Do not mind her, good lords but send her away. As to you, madam, I say, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? And the crowd goes wild. It's a knockout blow for the judges. King can pardon my husband now. Wow, Elizabeth was so brave. Those judges didn't like her showing them up and I bet they knew what they were doing was wrong. Good for her. It must have been really hard, having to look after all those kids and then your husband being in prison. For no reason. Good for her. See, I couldn't do what she did. If my husband was in jail, I'd be straight out that door. Jessica. Just saying. Yeah, in that case, me too. Wait, what? You just said the complete opposite. What do you really think, Annie? That is what I think, Jess. We're just very similar. So there's a statue of John Bunyan in town, but where's Elizabeth's? Where's any female statue? There must be one. Pizza Express. John Bunyan. Debenhams. Nelson Mandela. The Two Faces. Genderless. Genderless. Oh. So, there's no female statue in Bedford. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Right, so, who's next? Dorothy Osborne. My name is Dorothy Osborne. I was born in Bedfordshire in 1627. You may know that I wrote letters, lots and lots of letters. But did you know that I lied to the authorities to save my brother from going to jail? Or that I rebelled against my family for seven years while they tried to marry me off to men I did not want to marry? And believe me, that was unheard of in the 17th century. I would like you to marry Thomas. Hello. No, thank you. I want you to marry Henry. All right. No thanks. You will marry Justinian. Hello. No. Dorothy. No. Darling. No. Dorothy. No, 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 no. Amazingly, I survived smallpox, which left my face and body badly scarred. But that didn't stop me from finally marrying my true love, William, I became Lady Temple. Despite my scars, I travelled with William 
through Europe on matters of state. I even helped Princess Mary to marry William III of Orange, a marriage that changed England forever. But that, of course, is a different story. Dorothy Osborne was married just a few years before Elizabeth. What if they knew each other? See, I couldn't let my dad decide who I could and could not marry. Me neither. Did you know there are still girls, even today, who get told they have to marry? That's terrible. Well, I guess if the girls prefer it that way, then it's their choice. Yeah, in that case, it's alright. Why do you always agree with what's just been said? Do I? Yeah. You do, actually. I don't know, I can't help it. Maybe it's because I live with my dad and three older brothers. It's just easy to agree with them. Annie, who are you supposed to be finding out about? Ellen Oliver. She was a suffragette. Wait, what is a suffragette? They fought for women to have the vote, you know, by going on marches and that. Oh, Lisa. It was a lot more than just marches and that. It was about finding their voice, making sure they were listened to. What? Finding their voice. They really blew things up. Ellen Oliver. Have you ever visited the Panacea Museum in Bedford? You really should. It's a fascinating place and incredible story to tell. A story about women who knew what they wanted and who worked hard to get it. I helped set up the Panacea Society. I was the brains behind the PR and marketing. We were known all around the world. But how did I get there? Well, in my 30s I became a strong supporter of the suffragette movement. Our aim was to be given the vote. We marched. Some of us did more. We threw bricks, attacked policemen, changed us as railings. One brave soul threw herself under the king's horse. We want to be heard. Deeds, not words, was our motto. I spent time in prison. I'm not eating that. Why? What's wrong with it? I'm in hunger strike. But I made it myself. It's yummy. I will not eat until women are given the vote. Really? Oh well, if you're sure. So, women got the vote then? Some women got the vote. It was a start, but it wasn't enough. This is where my journey to Bedford began. Okay, Pearl Thompson. Or listen to this. Pearl Thompson. My name is Pearl Thompson. I was born in Portland, Jamaica in 1917. My family were farmers, but I loved to study and learn and share my learning with others. When I left school, all I wanted to be was a teacher. I emigrated to England with my husband in 1956. The town we came to was Bedford. I was the first black teacher in Bedford, and I overcame prejudice and discrimination to do my job, and so that others could follow after me. No. Your Jamaican teaching qualification is not valid in England. But it can offer you a job. Ah, no, your certificate in nutrition from New York only qualifies you here in Bedford to help out in the kitchen. <sighs> okay then. How about seamstress? That's a proper job for a woman. After all, it is the 1950s. I suppose there weren't many black people in Bedford at that time. I don't know if I would describe the treatment I received as racism, but it was ignorance. Something I'd never really come across before. In Jamaica, we were taught that England was the mother country. If an English woman came to Jamaica, she was treated as a queen. I thought in England I at least would be accepted by the people. I never really felt that they didn't want me there, just that they didn't know me yet. These people really needed an education, 
And if I really wanted to be a teacher, there was no better place to start. <clears throat> there seems to be more and more children that don't speak English, and I don't quite know how to help them. I wonder, do you have any ideas? So, I studied for my British teaching qualification. My qualification was accepted. I was put in charge of a group of children who barely spoke English. They couldn't read or write English, but I loved the challenge and created my own teaching materials. All my hard work paid off and the results were fantastic. So, girls, what can you tell us about the risk takers and history makers of Bedford? Per Thompson was the first black teacher in Bedford. She taught in three schools in the town and developed her own resources. At the time, this was not part of her teacher training and was not funded by schools or the government. She made an invaluable contribution to the community and without her, Bedford would not be the town it is today. Ellen Oliver is an amazing woman too. Although I never met her, she taught me something, that I have a voice. I just need to find it and speak up for myself. The suffragettes inspired generations of young women to find their own voice. All the women we studied did something amazing. Dorothy Osborne had to stand alone against all the expectations and assumptions made about women at the time. What she did is an example to us all. Elizabeth Bunyan, a young woman in a world ruled by men. She dared to challenge the authorities because she knew she was right and they were wrong. Wow, those women were amazing. So why does nobody know about them? Somebody does. Yeah, we do. I think I'm definitely going to vote next year. Yeah, too. same. Somebody needs to share these stories. We need to share these stories. There you have it. There are inspirational women all over the place. Q quote. During times when women had no real voice or power, these women fought to make their voices heard.